Video shot immediately after the accident documents how Tokyo Electric Power Company responded. On today's Nuclear Watch, we'll review some of the footage and discuss what it reveals. TEPCO released portions of the video earlier this month, more than a year and a half after the disaster. It was taken during teleconferences between workers at the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear plant and officials at TEPCO's Tokyo headquarters as they struggled to bring the crisis under control. TEPCO created a 90-minute segment from its hours of footage. It released this to the media for broadcast. The video shows workers panicking in response to a series of explosions at the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear plant. The video is important because it documents TEPCO's initial response to the accident. It could help fill in some of the blanks about what went wrong. NHK World's Ken Ichiro Okamoto covered the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant accident and its aftermath. He has spent the past weeks reviewing TEPCO's video footage. So, Ken Ichiro, tell us what you saw. As the saying goes, a picture is worth a thousand words. There are a lot of written documents about the nuclear disaster but they do not offer a complete picture of what happened. For this reason, I feel that the video is very important. How did TEPCO make the video available? One part consists of 90 minutes of footage taken from the hours of video recorded. TEPCO released this version to the media on August 6th. Some parts of the video were edited to protect the identities of individual workers. TEPCO is also allowing journalists to watch 150 additional hours of video at its Tokyo headquarters for a limited time. There are conditions. The video is shown on computers. No one may download or record the images. Only written memos are allowed. The video is available for viewing only on weekdays and for a maximum of six hours a day. 150 hours of video with six hours a day means that it would take at least 25 days to watch all of the footage. Yes, that's right. But at first, TEPCO says journalists could watch the video only for five days. The company later extended the period to one month. I have discovered many things by watching the video. That was just after the number one reactor exploded. A senior officer at TEPCO's headquarters announces that members of the accident task force can leave. The video shows most senior members, including TEPCO's president, immediately leaving the room after the announcement. Now, TEPCO says that these people remained inside the company buildings. But the video raises questions. TEPCO must have more footage. Is there any chance they will release all the video? Well, TEPCO is reluctant to make any of the video public. They say the teleconferences are for internal communication. They also say the company does not legally have to release the video. But the video footage is a variable record of the nuclear disaster, not only for Japan, but all over the world. NHK will continue to press TEPCO to disclose all information about the accident. NHK World's Kenichiro Okamoto for Nuclear Watch. The Tokyo District Court this week ordered TEPCO to hand over a copy of the video. The court will keep the video as evidence. Tokyo Electric Power Company officials will provide more video showing how they dealt with the aftermath of the nuclear accident at Fukushima Daiichi. They recently released a shortened version of the intense teleconferences over the first five days. Members of the public and the media criticized a partial disclosure. TEPCO spokespersons say they will release video recorded in the month after the disaster. The utility already disclosed 150 hours of video of the teleconferences between its Tokyo head office 
virus and the plant. TEPCO banned the media from making copies. The new video documents the days when TEPCO engineers had problems securing water to cool spent fuel pools at Fukushima Daiichi. This reignited fears of further nuclear fallout. Japanese leaders also approved the unannounced release of low-level radioactive water into the ocean during this time. That prompted criticism from neighboring countries. TEPCO spokespersons say they will partially edit the new video despite calls for full disclosure. They have again cited the need to protect their employees' privacy.